Hello, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. Hope you guys had a great lunch and are all energized for the session. We have a lot to share in this presentation in a very short time, so let's get started. I am Ashna Malhotra, a front-end engineer at Booking.com. And I'm Mr. Mazil, I'm working as a technical product manager. And we are here to share about the LEGO approach, leveraging reusability for a seamless user experience. Now we are Booking.com and we love checking in. So let's try to understand each other. Um, how many internal plugins does your organization have? More than five? Great, more than 10? 15? Amazing. Who is the main developer audience for your plugins? Just the front-end developers? Uh, maybe the back-enders, SREs, or database engineers? Great. How much time does it take for you to develop a new plugin and move it to production? Less than a week? No? Two weeks? Wow. A month? OK. And when was the last time when you upgraded your third-party libraries? Within a month? Perfect. Within a quarter? Delayed? OK. Let's check it out. So this is our agenda for today. We will be talking about backstage and booking, understand the challenges that we are trying to solve here. We will then dive into the LEGO approach, along with the related elements like integrating company branding, documentation, and collaboration. And then we will help you make a plan to have a smooth user experience. So today, I want to share you how we transformed our internal tools and redefined how we work together. So when I joined Booking three years ago, our teams were struggling with a lot of internal tools. Each tool had its own terminology, no UI consistency. It's often like trying to piece together a mismatch puzzle. Developers were frustrated, users couldn't find what they needed, and most importantly, productivity was taking a hit. This is when we decided to try something bold, the backstage. So, we envisioned a unified platform where all our internal tools could live in one place, a space to simplify work, connect teams, and make collaboration easier. So, we took the plunge and moved the tools that I managed into this platform. To be honest, it wasn't smooth, because the learning curve was steep, and many were resistant to change. But each hurdle taught us how to make, make Backstage more intuitive and more effective. Today, we have over 40 internal plugins and 1,500 unique daily users. Now, we have a platform that doesn't just drives productivity, but fosters a culture of unity and engagement. So, problems and challenges. Imagine being a developer stepping into this new tool. You are excited, but you are met with a steep learning curve. And as I mentioned before, there is also resistance to change over from familiar tools. So as a product manager, I want to make this onboarding process easier so developers could dive in confidently. Workload was another issue. With so many tools, developers were spread thin, often juggling systems rather than focusing on meaningful work. Consistency, maintenance, and easy access to documentation and information were our top priorities to help teams work more effectively. Now, this is not just about developers, but all the engineers who need access to information. Uh, there have been a lot of studies which talk about how important it is to have uniform systems within the organization. 
This one is from McKinsey and it, states, and it says that employees using standardized systems are 35% more productive and in case of larger organizations, this can also translate into significant cost savings and faster project completion rates. Now when this challenge came to us as the development team of the core backstage, we decided to apply the LEGO approach. Just like different Lego pieces fit together and create a beautiful masterpiece, the same way we decided to create a set of reusable components which are customizable enough to fit the requirements and at the same time fit in together and create a seamless user experience. Now your reusable components can be as small as a button or maybe as big as a table which has filtering, searching, sorting, pagination, download, detail panel, links, and whatnot. You should be able to decide what your plugin page should look like, divided into small reusable components which can fit together and create your actual plugin page. Now, how to approach this technically? The reusable components can be created at two major levels. First one is the project level, which means it needs to reside at the core backstage level and needs to be accessible by all the plugins within it. To achieve this, we've created a shared plugin. It is a normal backstage plugin. The only difference lies is that it cannot be accessed independently via a URL. It is meant to contain all the reusable elements. It can be APIs, your components, hooks, utils, or whatever requirement you may have. Next comes the plugin level, reusable components. So there can be use cases where a component may not make sense to put at the root backstage level, or maybe the plugin has some certain requirements. For example, a plugin would may want to display a particular graph with some particular data points. So they can create a shared or common folder within their components itself, create the structure of the graph there, and then utilize it along all the different pages. Now, how does it matter? We just don't do it because the studies say or because it is a standardized practice. We do it because we've seen the impact in numbers. The time to create a new plugin and move it to production used to take one to two days. It has now dropped to one to two hours. This is on average. There have been much more complex plugins which used to take much more time. There is no prior front-end development knowledge required to build plugins in backstage in booking. And I can quote it because 60% of our developers developing in backstage are backenders or SREs. As per our internal surveys, the convenience to create and maintain plugins in backstage has been rated four out of five. Now it takes much less time to onboard new members because it is more intuitive, they know what is expected and how to achieve it. Last but not the least, and very important, improved code quality. Having the reusable components, we've been able to have better unit test coverage, less code smells, and much less items in our backlog. So, I wanted to make Backstage home for our developers. So, imagine logging into a tool that works, but feels impersonal, like a black canvas. You know it's there to help you, but it feels detached, no sense of belongings. With Backstage, we wanted to make it different, a familiar tool. Because familiarity makes a tool more intuitive and comfortable. By using the same theme as our customer-facing portals, we made Backstage cohesive with the company's identity. So, And using the company theme also increased and improved user adoption and created a seamless user experience. As we all know from extensive AMB tests that even a single color change can impact user experience. Now, how to integrate this company branding into Backstage? It can be done by introducing theming. 
You can either create a brand new theming for your backstage application, or you can utilize the already existing theming if you have one in your organization. Add theming is part of your packages. So we know that app folder inside the packages is the one that is responsible for creating your backstage application and also initializing all the plugins. So it is a great place to put your theme in and then pass it as a parameter while you're creating the backstage application. Don't worry, in the next slide I have screenshots of how it really looks like inside the repository. And then you can use the combination of MUI and backstage theme providers so that you can create light theme, dark theme, or any other theme that you may want to have and make it accessible throughout the backstage platform. Once you have the base set up, you are now ready to add extra theme properties. They can be maybe palette colors or typography, spacing, or any other units that you may want to have. From the very left screenshot, you see that we have added theme inside the packages app folder. Now here you can create objects for all kinds of theming you may want to have. You can introduce the parameters that you would like to have, assign the values. If you want to import your already existing theme, you can do it at the same place as well and utilize the values from your existing theme. On the top right corner, you see how the MUI theme provider and the unified theme provider from Backstage are available to create the different kinds of theming and make it available across all the plugins and all the pages within Backstage. And the last screenshot is about adding extra properties. No rocket science, this is just TypeScript module augmentation. You can find about it in the TypeScript documentation as well. You can. Um, for example, I've just extended the palette here with some more colors, but then you can extend the entire theme with other properties that you may want to have, which are, that you may want to have, which are not provided by MUI and Backstage out of the box. By the way, you can uh, have examples for this module augmentation from MUI and also from the Backstage repository. And this is how our new components look like after integrating our company branding. They are definitely very more in number, but then they're integrated with our company theming very carefully so that we also don't overdo it, but help our developers and engineers to access the information very easily. They all fit together and create our amazing page for one of our pillars. We also have a, a UX designer who is working with us, who has helped us with intensive user research and a lot of interviews and surveys through which we've identified how important it is for the branding to be available and how much it makes easier for the people to access what they need. Now, how does it matter? Score to get things done, increased. Score to find information has increased and the time to take action has decreased. We have been able to achieve all of this because it's much more intuitive for our developers to know what's, what's there, where some action needs to be taken, or how they can achieve a task that they are uh, requiring. As we built our ecosystem of reusable components, we discovered an unexpected challenge. Plugin developers were not always aware of existing custom components. This is why we decided to focus on documentation. We created developer and user guides to make information easy to find. We also introduced Storybook. Storybook is an interactive documentation. Unlike these static guides, Storybooks let developers to see components in action and in real time. Why and how to integrate Storybook within Backstage? First of all, it's very easy to set up. You can use the React Storybook script to set up Storybook for your Backstage application. It provides an interactive way of documentation just like Mesut mentioned, and it provides a structured environment to build and test your components so that you know exactly how your component works, how you want it to work, and how other people can reuse it. Now, this is again a screenshot from our repository. We've added the storybook configuration, all the default files that it requires, and all the dependencies inside the shared folder, folder itself. 
so this is the folder which contains all the reusable components this is the place where the stories need to be created so it makes sense to put all the configuration and dependencies within this folder and do not clutter your root level with the dependencies or configs that may not make sense to be there now while you are setting up storybook if you try to set it inside your shared plugin you may get some issues while running the script this is because uh, storybook uh, wants some dependencies in the file structure to be in place from a default react project in that case i would suggest to set it up at the root level but then move all the changes inside the shared plugin to have a more logical way of grouping them and on the left side is just a small example of one of our story for our reusable components everything storybook documentation helps and you have we have a lot of examples in the backstage repository as well now how does this matter reduced time to understand how to get things done now because our engineers know that there is a single source of truth available for what can be achieved how can be how it can it be, it be achieved and what do they need to uh, get it done it takes much less time for them they do not need to come to us and then wait for our responses they can just get the information and get things done support requests for the core team have significantly dropped because again everything is on the documentation so we have less time to worry about all of the support requests and we can put the same time into some meaningful things and increased collaboration now you may have not expected it to be part of a documentation impact but it has really stood out uh with with everything being available very transparently our developers can easily find out first of all like outdated documentation or fixing to some things but then they have great ideas for extending the reusable components as well making it more customizable sharing many more processes that may help with automating things or making things much more easier having said that collaboration is a key to have a faster growth of any project In the morning session the backstage team mentioned that they really appreciate the contribution that the end users bring to backstage which helps it grow even more. You can achieve the same growth within your organization for your backstage if you have a proper community available. Now how can you create a community? For example, we have uh, Slack channels, workplace groups, uh, we have some sessions that we uh, keep on having regularly. So when people know that there are other people who are using this facing the similar issues a lot of time they talk to each other find the solutions and fixes and get things done much easily regularly sharing updates now it is very important if you don't tell somebody about something they just won't know it and there won't be any interest for whatever hard work you're putting into things So uh, one thing that we started doing is we have a do you know series for our backstage where biweekly we share whatever new we have in our backstage instances and that is really driving some adoption and interest motivate everyone to contribute just a small core team would not be able to ha have something new every now and then and improve the process processes so it is very important if your end users your engineers are contributing in organizing workshops so this is again something that we do once in 6 months where we organize uh, maybe full day workshops where we talk about the current challenges that our developers and engineers are facing we do a lot of discussions and ideation sessions where we also get a lot of new ideas fresh ideas and help us gather a lot of feedback um gathering feedback is an amazing way to understand that what you're doing is it really helping or maybe you can change some of uh, your things to uh, have that make a real impact now let's make a plan and talk about the stages first of all you need to understand pain points for your customer then try building the different bits like reusable components create or import your company's theme create an interactive documentation storybook can be a good candidate for this one communication this is the key point keep communicating and gather feedback as much as possible and lastly 
create a community because this will encourage users to adopt and use Backstage. Now let's check out. One another tip that we would like to share here is automation. Automation can help you reduce time for a lot of things. A very small example is we have our own custom plugin generator template. So whenever a new plugin is created, we create the default files and the structure of how a plugin should look like, have all the reusable components in there, which makes sense. So now it's much easier for our developers to know what is expected out of them and how to achieve it. Uh, maybe can you guess the number of shared components or the reusable components that we have? Maybe 10? How, how many of you think we have 10 components? No? Maybe 20? Do you think it's more or do you think we just don't have anything? <laughs> more? Yeah. Uh, we currently have about around 40 reusable components, but they are gradually growing also with the new company branding that you just saw. Uh, we've really worked uh, to enable backends, SREs, or other engineers to be able to create plugins. Just as an example, Mesut is a product manager. A lot of times just comes in the backstage repository, makes some fixes or maintenance things. So that takes a, a lot out of our developer's plate, really. My last question for the presentation. Can you guess the size of our team? 10 people? More? Uh, how many of you think, okay, 20? Okay, uh, seven? Uh, okay, we are actually... <laughs> that is correct. Wow, you're so accurate. We are three, a three developer team with a product manager, a UX designer, and an engineering manager. And we have some time for questions. Any questions? We have a question. Oh, thank you. Great present. I'm sorry. Hello. Thank you. Great presentation. Um, I have a quick question. Uh, with over a thousand users and three thousand systems, how do you manage permissions and who sees what within the platform? Um, so we have Passport integrated. It's not directly integrated within the UI, but then it's integrated through all our backend systems. So they decide what to show to the users when we make the relevant requests. So yeah, Passport is so actually. So there is a centralized tool called as Passport in our company, and permission management is handled by that tool. Got it. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you for sharing. Um, I was curious if you all have um, been able to render storybook documentation with tech docs or how you've integrated that with Backstage itself. Sorry, can you repeat, please? Sure. I was curious if you all um, have tried integrating storybook with tech docs or how you've been able to maybe render some of those sample components and storybook components in Backstage itself. Yes, so the thing is our documentation is really scattered at a lot of different places because of the reason that we have so many tools and everybody had uh, different places. Uh, and, and we wanted to have a central place, so uh, we, we now have a central place where we have moved all our documentation and we're linking the storybook there itself so that it's easier for whoever is coming, even if they do not know about Backstage earlier, they are able to come there and understand about it. Do you want to add something? Yeah, we are not utilizing technical documentations plugin yet because they are forcing us to use a centralized documentation, which will be Confluence, I guess. So they don't let us to create another documentation uh, option in the company. Thank you. Do we have more questions? Cool. OK, great. Thank you so much. You've been an amazing audience. Uh, we are here the remaining day, so if you would like to connect, you're most welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you.